First off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters for, and uh, our grand predecessor and predecessors for this opportunity to learn to talk a little bit about Maitreya Buddha. Last week, uh, Johnny had talked about uh, the 17th patriarch incarnation of uh, Maitreya Buddha, right? <coughs> um, and this is more, I guess, more broader uh, topic about Maitreya, his past lives, uh, some of his past lives. Okay, so. Um, like every Buddha, well, technically he was a, it was Bodhisattva. Okay, a Bodhisattva is actually one who they've attained enlightenment. Okay, they've they've actually they're essentially a Buddha. Okay, they've attained enlightenment, but they choose to stay or to come back into this world to help other people. Right. So that's that's kind of a little bit different from uh, well, in like in Buddhism, they have like two main maybe like three main uh, like like branches or sex okay uh, one is the Theravada and then one is the Mahayana and then there's another one actually but uh, the Theravada one is is mostly self cultivation for self cultivation okay to self achievement enlightenment right <clears throat> but those people who cultivate that way usually cannot become Buddhas okay because uh, they can achieve the the status of an arhat an arhat which is pretty high up. I mean, they don't necessarily have to reincarnate, but, or at least not in this world, but they're, they're kind of stuck at that level. Okay, so they're not Buddhas. Um, a lot of the Buddha, some of the Buddhas, um, they were ar Arhats before, uh, before they become Buddhas, uh, like Jigong Buddha, he was an Arhat. Okay, he was an Arhat, and then he came down, and then he became a Buddha, okay? <coughs> so, uh, in order to become a Buddha, we have to be a human being, <laughs> okay? You have to go through that process, okay? Uh, become a human being and then to achieve uh, that Buddhahood. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, Bodhisattvas, uh, they've essentially become enlightened. And then so the, in the Mahayana branch uh, uh, or the school of Buddhas, Buddhism, um, it's what they call the big boat, which means it's not just helping myself become enlightened, but helping others achieve enlightenment as well. Okay, so, so that's why the Bodhisattva, the way of the Bodhisattva, you know, so they follow the six paramitas, which, you know, we've talked about before and probably talk about in the future. That's kind of a practice to help others, to be a benefit to others, right? To help others be able to achieve enlightenment as well. That's what the, bod the Bodhisattva way is. That's not just for themselves. So even though they attain enlightenment themselves, they want to stay, they want to come back to this world to guide other people and other sentient beings to, to s have them achieve enlightenment as well. Right, so Maitreya, uh, you know these bodhisattvas. They've been, uh, they've been around, or they've been bodhisattvas for who knows eons. Okay, they have many kalpas. Okay, so uh, that's hundreds or thousands of lifetimes of being a bodhisattva. Okay, so obviously, you now in our world as we know it today, in this world, uh, we've been around, or the Buddhas always say we've been around roughly sixty thousand years. Okay, human beings, uh, mm -hmm. modern humans. Um, but the Bodhisattvas, they've been, you know, so you, you can imagine, okay, in 60,000 years, how many lifetimes can you have in there? Uh, you know, at most, well, I don't know. I mean, it depends. <laughs> it could be like a thousand, but it's probably fewer. Uh, but uh, in the very beginning, though, there was no culture, no language, right? So, so it's only later on when we have language uh, and culture, that's only a few thousand years, maybe 10,000 years at most. Okay, so, uh, so the bodhisattvas, though, uh, they've been around longer than that. So you say, well, you know, how can they be? Actually, there are many worlds. Okay, we're not the only world. Uh, and I'm not necessarily saying that there are, yes, there may be other worlds like our world, physical, material world, where we have, uh, they may not be humans, they might be other, <laughs> you know, aliens, whatever. Uh, but there are many other worlds that are in the spiritual realm, in the diva realms. Okay, so that's uh, actually next week lecture Kai will talk about various those other realms. Um, and so they exist in those realms too. And those realms, there are many more than there are these physical worlds that we know of. Okay, so, so even though we think, ah, the universe is huge, but <laughs> the, the diva worlds or those spiritual realms are, e it's even greater. Okay, it's even more. Uh, so they say that there's like 3,000 little worlds and then <laughs> I don't know, so many thousands of, of different worlds. Okay, so anyways, these bodhisattvas and Buddhas, they've been around for, for many kalpas, okay, many eons. 
Uh, so we just don't know. We only know, like, for the most part, what's happened in this current age, you know, of our of our world. Okay, so Maitreya Buddha. Um, so Maitreya, th that name or title, the name means mercy or compassion. Okay. Uh, his original name. Okay, so when we talk about this, we're talking about his incarnation uh, at the time of Buddha. Okay, at the time of Sakyamuni Buddha. Sakyamuni Buddha. Uh, during his time, uh, Maitreya was also born, okay, uh, during that time, and that, that was the name he had. Uh, his original name was uh, uh, Ajita, actually, in, in, the, in the Hindu, it was Ajita, okay. Uh, he, when he learned of the Dharma, right, he vowed to have the, the greatest loving kindness, uh, and he also became a vegetarian as soon as he started cultivating, okay. So, so he made these vows, um, and Let's see, okay, and then so uh, Sakyamuni Buddha he prophesied that Maitreya would be the next great Buddha. Okay, so actually, yeah, uh, I'll get into this a little bit later. Um, uh, basically, the, in each kalpa or in each, each of these major kalpas, there are like so many Buddhas, there are like a thousand Buddhas. Okay, so um, so yeah, so after Sakyamuni Buddha, then it would become the Maitreya Buddha. Uh, Maitreya is actually it's just a title. Okay, so it happened. Uh, whoever, whatever, whoever becomes that Buddha, you know, that's the title that they have. Um, now, currently, he's a Bodhisattva, right? He's, he resides in this Chen Fo Yuan, the, the inner abbey of Tushita Heaven. Tushita Heaven is one of the levels of the, the, uh, the you can realm say, the desire. realm of desire. Okay, it's one of the higher levels of realm of desire. So, it's, yeah, so the realm of desire is the, the, the lowest realm. Okay, we live in the realm of desire. Okay, uh, but so that to see the heaven is there, and that's where he kind of all Buddhas actually they first are reborn in in that heaven, that to see the heaven, before they are born into this world, and then they can attain Buddhahood that way. That's the celestial heaven. Yeah, it's one of the, the celestial realm heavens. Of desire, in the realm of desire, right? We know there is the what underworld. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. the hungry ghost animal, human, asura, and then that's five, and then there's six levels of, of celestial heaven. That's the number six. I think yeah. Uh, yeah, six. yeah. So, <coughs> um, and then actually when, when we, you know, as cultivators in this white era, um, we are essentially following Maitreya Buddha, and so mm. when we pass away, leave this world, that's where we go to that to see the heaven. Uh, but it's only temporary, actually. I mean, we're there temporarily uh, because the Maitreya Buddha is supposed to come back to this world again, okay, another one more time. Uh, he's been in this world many times already, but uh, the last that we know of is the 17th patriarch that we talked about last week. Um, but he will come back again one more time, and that at that time, he will essentially rule over uh, a world that is, you can say, like a heaven on earth, okay, a paradise. Uh, it's hard to imagine that <laughs> world right now, but um, so there's going to go through many calamities. We know that during this period of many calamities, uh, they're going to happen, you can say, uh, app, but I would think it's after all that is, is done, uh, there won't be as many people living, actually, by, by then that he will come back into this world. And then all the people who've deceased, who went to, to see the heaven, they're gonna come be reborn into the world again as well with him. Okay, um, Okay. so uh, now Maitreya was also incarnated in this world four other times before the time of Sakamani Buddha. Okay, so again, it may not be in this world as we know it, okay? Uh, but, because these were kind of recorded in various sutras that either the Buddha spoke or other Buddhas or Bodhisattvas they, they talked about, okay? Uh, so it's not in our, our historical record, but um, in, in what the Buddha has spoken. All right, so, but during the, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, actually, okay, so, yeah, even back then in those, in those previous, uh, those other incarnations uh, before Buddha, um, Basically, there have been some prophecies by these other Buddhas to say that there will be a future Buddha, you know, the Maitreya Buddha, who, who will be like one of the greatest Buddhas, all right? 
Uh, and actually, he's, it's also said that he, he would be destined to be the fifth Buddha of the current Kalpa that we're in. Okay. Uh, we're, we're not exactly sure what, you know, the definition of this Kalpa, this time period, but, um, all right. So anyways, all right, so getting back to this, the Maitreya Dune in time of Sakamuni Buddha. Okay, so he, he was born in Varanasi, which is also the birthplace of Buddha himself, Sakamuni. Um, yeah. Right? Varanasi, was it? No, it no, wasn't? no, no. Buddha was born in, you know, Varanasi is near where, where Buddha gave his first teaching. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Uh, so... Uh, she was. Uh, he was born to the. Uh, there's a prime minister. Uh, so he's born to the prime minister's wife. Uh, apparently, the. Oh, okay. So when he was born, this fortune teller, um, you know, praised the boy that you know he become a great uh, man of good fortune and wisdom, right? A spiritual teacher in the world. Same thing, pretty much. <laughs> that uh, Buddha himself, right? Uh, was uh, what they said about Buddha himself, right? And so he was named. Uh, Maitreya, well, I think, yeah, he, he had various names, but Maitreya is one of the names that was given to him, uh, because basically his mother was, was not a nice person, okay, <laughs> to begin with, but then when she became pregnant with him, that her personality completely changed to, to be a very nice person, very uh, uh, caring, uh, and so because of that, uh, you know, he was given this name, uh, Maitreya, which meant, you know, loving kindness, um, and he also had another uh, name saying that he was unbeatable in this aspect okay so so he was you can say he's like the the well, I don't know the, the Buddha that embodies loving kindness the, the most okay uh, and so you can imagine wow so when a Buddha is born I mean they can they have such great power or force that they can transform you know the mother or other people right uh, so okay um, and so yeah all right Okay, so during his childhood years, right, the king that where his little kingdom that he lived in, <coughs> the king was very suspicious and he wanted to harm the the child Maitreya. Okay, so this is very interesting, and in various different traditions, right, they have these kind of stories, uh, just like Moses, right, uh, in, in the Christian or in the Judeo-Christian uh, tradition. Uh, but Maitreya, he escaped, and he sought help from and guidance from one of his uncles, who was very wise, okay? So the uncle really helped him uh, and, you know, taught him all the scriptures. So he, he became very proficient in all the scriptures, um, okay? And, uh, okay, so uh, the uncle then decided to send one of his disciples to report this to the prime minister, you know, let him know how his son was doing. Um, now, uh, this is kind of a little side story, I guess. Uh, but the, the disciple, you know, on his way to the, going to report to the Prime Minister, he heard that Sakamuni Buddha was going to give a, a sermon, a seminar, or a sermon. <laughs> uh, and he wanted to attend that. Uh, and unfortunately, he met with an untimely death, you know, a tiger ate him. Okay, so, uh, but because of his virtue, you know, uh, he, he actually ended up in one of these celestial heavens. Okay. Uh, and, okay, so, uh, but, okay. Um... Let me see. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Well, that disciple actually. The, okay, it was part of the side story. The the uncle. He actually. The uncle's very good. I mean, he supported all the monks. Right. He uh, had uh, basically. They had a vegetarian convention, <laughs> and he. He provided food for all the cultivators. He gave every cultivator like five hundred dollars. Well, they're they're. The whatever five hundred dollars. Uh, their time, their money, um, to each attendee. Unfortunately, there was one cultivator who came late and he didn't get anything, right? So he, he got angry and he wanted to kill, the, basically uh, harm the uncle. Uh, so the uncle was very, uh, was, was, was afraid. But uh, that, that soul of that disciple, right, who, who ended up, who was eaten by the tiger, right? So he came back and, and kind of consoled him uh, and says that uh, there was currently, you know, the Buddha was preaching in uh, uh, Rajagra, okay, I don't know that place, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Rajagra. No, no, that's where uh, Vulture Peak is? Yeah, okay, Vulture yeah, Vulture Peak, okay. Right, that's, that's, yeah, that's, right. Okay, so, so basically the uncle sent uh, 16 people, including Maitreya, to seek this, uh, my, seek the Buddha, right, so you, who was preaching there. Um, now, the, the saying was, that a Buddha would have a perfect appearance, right? There, there's 
there are certain qualities or characteristics of a Buddha when you they're supposed to uh, show. Uh, but so when Maitreya saw the Buddha, he said, "Well, you know, this doesn't look so special. <laughs> doesn't look perfect." Uh, but then at that moment, right, the Buddha then presented a perfect appearance to him. So basically, yeah, even though maybe his quote unquote physical appearance wasn't perfect, but the Buddha, a Buddha, can present any appearance they want to anyone. Okay, so it's all, it's all in the mind. Okay, it's all in how we perceive things. So so. He, he presented an appearance to Maitreya in his mind uh, of what he looks like, uh, you know, that perfect uh, appearance, okay? Uh, and then, so Maitreya, using his abilities, okay, he, using his thoughts, he, he would project his thoughts to the Buddha without saying anything, right? He'd project his thoughts, questions. He would ask Buddha these questions uh, just in his mind, and then the Buddha would just start answering. Okay, so, so the other people, they all even heard <laughs> the Buddha speaking. They didn't hear Maitreya speaking anything, but he, they only heard Buddha speaking, all right? So, uh, so that is one of the things. So uh, basically, yeah, so that, that's how he was answering all those questions. Um, okay, so basically uh, they, you know, Maitreya and these other people, they, they, uh, they thought, wow, this Buddha is very great. So great, uh, and they they really respect him, and, and so they wanted to worship uh, and essentially become his disciples. Okay, so uh, so they did. They went in and you know asked to become monks. Uh, at that time, you know you have to become a monk of the order, right? To to uh, to you know follow uh, the the uh, become essentially one of the disciples. Um, Okay, so then the Buddha uh, at that time, then he, so th those 16, those 16 who came, uh, they went uh, and asked to become monks, and the Buddha preached to them uh, basically, you know, the, the true Dharma. Okay, so actually the 15 of them then became enlightened right away. So the enlightenment, <laughs> you know, because these, these people, they've been cultivators, okay, and who knows how many lifetimes before that they've been cultivating. So every time we cultivate a lifetime, it kind of builds up, uh, it accumulates, okay, let's say accumulates. Uh, we build up a foundation, okay, so each lifetime. As, as long as we're not like backsliding, you know, re retreating, um, if we're constantly progressing, we're we building up, and that adds up. So, so at one point, you know, it builds up to the point where suddenly all we need to hear is some, some Dharma, and then that, that'll just click, and then we become enlightened, okay. Um, and so that's what happened to these 15. So, so remember I said earlier about being enlightened, these, at that point, they're all ar arhats, okay? Once they become enlightened, that's, that's essentially the level of the arhat, okay? Uh, and, but, you know, they're not bodhisattvas or Buddhas yet. They're basically, for a bodhisattva and Buddha, they have to make vows, okay, so to become that. Uh, and so at that point, they aren't yet, right? Uh, so, uh, okay, so basically, yeah, they became arhats and then, uh, so Maitreya sent one of the 15 worshippers back to his uncle to, with the good news, okay, that, uh, right. Okay, so, um, now there's this other story of the, the golden garment gift from Buddha's aunt, or I, I don't know if it's his aunt or his mother, but um, uh, his aunt or, or mother, you know, made uh, uh, this, golden, this golden garment. Uh, I don't know if it was made from real gold, but, but it, it was a golden color. Right, uh, as a gift for the Buddha. The Buddha, you know, didn't want to accept it, and he kind of says, you know, see if any of his disciples would take it. None of them dared to to take it, because actually, it, it, there's a, a certain meaning uh, responsibility, and when you accept that, right? So, but only Maitreya, uh, he would, he was willing to accept that uh, garment. Okay, a robe. It's basically a robe. Um, so basically, in accepting that robe, basically, uh, it, it's kind of like becoming, well, he, he's taking on a certain responsibility, right? So, uh, now every time, you know, Buddha, right? Th because Buddha and the monks and his disciples, they would all go out uh, and to beg for alms, right? For, for food from people. Uh, every time they go out, Maitreya is wearing this golden robe. Uh, everyone would say, wow, you know, he's so dignified. His, his appearance is so great. But <laughs> actually no one gave him any food. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but there was this one person, this pearl maker, okay? So uh, 
had great admiration for the Maitreya, and he offered him food and water. Um, okay, so afterwards, Maitreya actually preached the Dharma to, to that person, uh, and uh, as a result, that person became, you know, very, uh, you can say, religious and enlightened, and he vowed never to retreat from his cultivation. So, uh, okay, so, uh, so you can say, you know, they, they kind of established kind of a, 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 an affinity there. Um, okay. Um, all right. Okay, so uh, that, that's, that was w one story. And then so receiving the title of Maitreya Buddha. Okay, so Sakamani Buddha foretold the future world when uh, there would be a heavenly place. Okay, so heaven on earth. Uh, a special boy would be born in a cultivating family. He would forsake worldly enjoyments, devote himself to cultivation, uh, and attain ultimate Buddhahood. Um, so Maitreya heard that, heard what Buddha was saying, and so he said he wanted to be that Maitreya Buddha in the future. So even though his name was Maitreya, but I mean, that's, it's actually just the title for that, that future Buddha. Okay, so, so he was willing to accept that, that responsibility. Okay, so if you can imagine that, that's, you know, he had to make a great vow to, for that. So like Maitreya Buddha's, his vow, right, is to transform the world into, uh, you can say like a heavenly paradise. Okay, so, um, but that's a very great vow. I mean that that's not something. So all the other bodhisattvas, they they <laughs> they weren't up to the task. You could say they didn't want to. They, they they weren't uh, you know willing to do that. So but he was okay. So that shows how great you know his his will, his determination was right. So then Sakamuni Buddha said, okay, so you know given that you said that you know <laughs> then you will be the next the Maitreya Buddha in the future, right? Uh, okay. Um, so now, so after the time of Buddha, so now he, uh, later on, so that, that was during the time of Buddha, his life during the time of Buddha. Then later on, he had a few more incarnations. Actually, you say it's, he had 72 incarnations in this, in this world that we know, uh, during this time. Uh, but we only know a few. Okay. So, uh, once he channeled, okay, he didn't actually born, wasn't born into this world. He channeled through uh, a Sangha, who was, you can say, he was one of the Bodhisattvas later on, 1,500 years later, okay? So uh, Bodhisattva Asanga, he was preaching the Supreme Dharma, okay? So, uh, and he invited Maitreya, you know, who at that time he had returned back to, to see to heaven, to channel through him to, to talk about this, this sutra, uh, these... Yeah. You know, so there, those are recorded in these five sa sastras, which are commentaries on sutras. Okay, so, um, so actually, you know, during the time of Buddha and even after, there were many of these, whether it's commentaries or even the sutras themselves, that were spoken by not just Buddha but other bodhisattvas as well. Okay, and these bodhisattvas may not necessarily be in the human form. Okay, so uh, they can. Uh, yeah, so, so this is, I mean, it's something that's kind of odd to us, but, uh, but actually today, you know, in our temple, we have that channeling as well. So, and the Buddhas can, can speak the Dharma uh, and, you know, create, uh, compose these scriptures. Uh, so, so it's, you can say that maybe it's something similar, right? Uh, okay, so now then there were four incarnations that we know of in of Maitreya in China. Now maybe he had incarnations elsewhere, we don't know. Uh, but these are uh, kind of like recorded in the history, I guess. Uh, so there is Fu Da Si, okay. He is in the Nanbei Dynasty. The, okay, so this is like, this is actually around the time of Bodhidharma, okay. Uh, then there was also the cloth bag, or the cloth sack monk at the end of the Tang Dynasty. Um, so some, yes, yeah, so it, it's unknown when he was born. Uh, but we know when, when his death was. Uh, then also as the 13th patriarch, okay, in the Qing Dynasty. So 13th patriarch, remember in our lineage of Tao, right, we talked about the 17th patriarch last week, right, he was also the 13th. Uh, and actually the 13th, there were two patriarchs at that yeah. time. Yeah, uh, so he was one of them. Uh, and then uh, the latest, as, we, as far as we know, was the 17th patriarch, okay. So... Talk about the Fu Da Si, okay. So there's there's pretty much, uh, you know, he was well known. Um, he was born in Zhejiang province. Uh, pe people called him the Bodhisattva Fu, okay. So 
Um, he had married at the age of 16, had two sons. Uh, and then the story goes, one, one day he was fishing, right? And he, <laughs> uh, the way he fished, he, he caught the fish, you know, put them in a basket or whatever. And then when he was done catching it, he would put the basket in the water. And yeah. say, so, you know, for any fish that wants to go, they can leave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and so, and people thought he was foolish, right, for doing that. You know, so I, I imagine all the fish left. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so he didn't really catch any. Uh, but this is very interesting because that's similar to Zhang Tai Gong, right? Yeah. His story, um, where he catch fish with a straight needle or a straight hook. hook. Uh, not, <laughs> not a hook, it's straight. Okay, and so no fish would ever, uh, ever get caught. Uh, so it's very interesting. Um, yeah. But uh, later on, there was this monk who who came and and you know came across him uh, and told him that he should look. You know, <laughs> look at him himself in in the water, right? And in, in, in the reflection in the water. And basically, what happened was he he saw his reflection, and in his reflection he saw my tree of Buddha above his head. Okay, so uh, that kind of woke him up. That you know that he uh, he is to be the future, you know, the Buddha. Okay, and actually that monk was Bodhidharma. Okay, so um, and so basically. <clears throat> yeah, so at that moment, he, you can say he was awakened and he kind of uh, uh, realized or remembered his past lives, his past vows, okay. So, uh, so that's how he knew that he would be the future um, Buddha. Uh, okay, so um, let me see. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so Bodhi, yeah, remember B uh, Bodhidharma had also spoken to try to uh, teach the Liang, uh, Emperor Liang, right? <coughs> Emperor Liang. He was the emperor at the time who was very, uh, you can say, I mean, he, I mean, he supported the Buddhist, yeah, he supported the, the Buddhist community. I mean, he built temples, all, uh, supported the monks and all that. Uh, and so Bodhidharma, you know, spoke to him, uh, but, you know, he found out he was not really worthy to, to take on, get on, get the, uh, become a patriarch. Uh, but actually, uh, this Fudasa also, you know, taught, uh, tried to teach uh, the, the Emperor Liang as well. Um, okay. Uh, so, okay. All right. So, uh, but anyways, uh, Fu and his wife, they worked as farmers, right? Uh, when people, <laughs> but then sometimes people come and steal, right? Steal their crop, right? Uh, but he would help fill their basket when they did, <laughs> which is... Uh, so that's that's interesting because Jesus says the same thing, right? So when is someone steal whatever, you just give the shirt off your back to them, right? So uh, very magnanimous, okay? So very giving. Um, uh, this I think this is very hard to do. I, I think for I think I, I don't know if any one of us would be able to do that. You know, someone stealing something, you say, here, have more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that that's so that just shows how what kind of a big heart he has, uh, magnanimous heart. Okay, so uh, people, and he, of course, he was, you know, he was enlightened, so he was also teaching, uh, preaching them the Dharma. <clears throat> uh, one, one time there was an official, who local official, who thought he was kind of spreading falsehoods, fallacies, and he arrested him, put him in jail for several weeks, and he didn't have any wa uh, food or water, and yet he, you know, he was fined. <laughs> and so as a result, the official, you know, was, was pretty impressed, and so let him, let him go, right? Uh, so that that's uh, yeah okay so that's that's another one of his stories, um, okay another story there's uh, uh, in a natural disaster right so <coughs> uh, Fu he donated all his money for relief of the victims right it wasn't enough and he asked his wife to sell herself as a slave okay now the wife who is also you know very good uh, she vowed I wish all sentient beings could attain nirvana um, as she was willing to d to sell herself to to help other people um, and so there was this old lady who heard that and she was very touched moved by that and so she's so she like bid like fifty thousand uh, dollars to you know for for the services of the wife to, as a slave uh, and uh, and so but anyways later on like a month later you know she let her go back to 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 the family um, so so again, showing that they are very selfless, okay? So this is really 
you know, you'll see in all his lifetimes, he's very shows these characteristics or traits, these qualities, these virtues that we associate with Maitreya. Okay. Um, he also preached the truth. Okay, so I mentioned that the, the Emperor Yang. Okay. Um, okay. So um, on. Okay. So on this day, on April twenty fifth, which is actually on the lunar calendar date. Uh, 569 he was uh, 73 he predicted that he was going to pass away okay so so he sat on uh, this rock at at this um there was a monast there was a monastery a temple that he we went to uh basically uh where is that uh, oh, okay I, I don't remember the, the name of that temple but uh i think it was swang ling bao yeah swang ling bao but anyways <coughs> Uh, so he said, before he, before he passed away, he says, The physical form is temporary and full of pain. We should cultivate the six paramitas and be cautious of our actions, uh, speech, and thoughts. It will be difficult to escape from hell if we ever fall into it. Therefore, we should repent at all times. Okay, and then he, and then he passed away after speaking those, those words. Um, so, uh, but yeah, basically the six paramitas, again, so as a bodhisattva, he's encouraging people to cultivate the way of the bodhisattva uh, to help others. Um, and yeah, to realize that this world, you know, is all, it's only temporary. I mean, if you think about it, you have many lives, uh, they're all different and it's all temporary. Um, so we also have to be careful, right, of all our actions, speech, and thoughts, because those are, we are planting the seed of karma every time. Any, any thoughts we have, any actions, any words that we speak, uh, potentially they are, potential seeds of karma within our eighth consciousness, right? The Alaya consciousness. Uh, and one day they may, you know, come to fruition, which means that there is the, the karmic consequence will come about. Okay. So, uh, and especially we need to avoid the, the hell or even, you know, the, the lower three of the, of the karmic paths, okay, of reincarnation, because those are the paths of hell, the path of animal, path of the hungry ghosts, the pretas, pretas, and so because it's very difficult to kind of get out of that once we get down to that level, um, it's very hard to climb out of it. Okay, so that's why as a human we are very fortunate. Um, of course, we have a choice: we can do good, we can do bad. So it's up to us to choose the right path. Uh, if we choose the the good path, then we we will only we can elevate ourselves uh, and eventually become bodhisattvas and buddhas, right? Okay, so repentance is also a very important thing that we have no idea what we did in pre previous past lives, right? Uh, even in this life, we've done a lot of things that uh, maybe we shouldn't do, uh, uh, like you know, eating meat, for example. We think, oh, that's normal, but actually, that's that's creating all sorts of bad karma. Uh, yeah, we we have to pay back. Okay, so uh, so that's why you know all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, they all become vegetarian. Okay. Um, to cut off that source of karma, uh, karmic debt, All right? Okay, so the the next, the probably the most famous or well known that we know, you know, uh, is the cloth bag monk or uh, in the late Tang Dynasty. So uh, that's the caricature that we see today, this symbol, the image that we see today with you know the big belly. Uh, that that's kind of where he got that, All right? So. It's not recorded when he was born or his early years. His name, his actual name was unknown. Uh, but he was, you know, kind of portly, like you see in the statues, uh, and always carried a cloth sack with him. Okay. Uh, but he would always speak the Dharma, you know, uh, preach, and his words were very profound and wise. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> and uh, so. Uh, so, you know, so people basically, since they didn't know his name, they just called him the cloth bag monk, okay. Um, yeah, he could, you know, he has obviously, at that point, he's, he's already a bodhisattva, okay. So bodhisattvas, they have, they have abilities, they have powers, okay. So um, that, you know, so he can, he can lie in the snow without getting wet, right. Uh, you know, even though the snow is melting, it doesn't get him wet. Uh, he can predict the people's future and also the weather, okay. Uh, so basically, people saw him when he when he was wearing uh, like wooden sandals. That meant that it was it was going to be a sunny day. If he wore these uh, these wet uh, what is it uh, kind of uh, straw sandals, wet straw sandals, then people knew that it was going to be a rainy day. <laughs> so they they kind of predict uh, you know the weather based on what 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 he wore. Um, 
but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Um, okay, so uh, basically, uh, the, now this one story is that he uh, he went to this one temple and and he would s he sat in the abbot's chair. Okay, so that that's reserved for the the head, you know, the the monk or the abbot at the temple. Uh, so one of the 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 monks in the room, you know, then so denounced denounced the cloth bag monk, denounced him, and kind of pulled him, tried to pull pull his ear, right? Tried to pull him out of the seat, uh, and it kind of stretched his ear, <laughs> stretched it, uh, but he wouldn't move. Okay, so so I don't know. That's I don't know. Maybe that's why you know they depict him with kind of long earlobes. I don't know, but uh, but then you know so so that monk go, went, went and reported to the abbot, and the abbot said you know you. You know, kind of reprimanded the monk, say, "Oh, you know, please let yeah." Uh, so he he said he let him stay there, stay you know, use that use that seat, and so from from now on, you know, he says from from now on, you know, he'll he'll be sitting there at that that chair, okay, in that seat, okay. So, uh, so that's that's maybe why you know in the temples, especially like in China, in in uh, where they always they would have the Maitreya Buddha as the central Buddha in the temple, the statue there. Okay, so because he, he, you know, he said he's, he's claiming that seat. Okay, so not, not Sakamuni Buddha, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, in, okay, so in 917, uh, Cloth Bag Monk went to this other temple, uh, this is Yerling Temple, and, oh, okay, so this is where he sat on rock, okay. Uh, so the, uh, again, <laughs> he's, he recites a poem before before he leaves this world. Right? He says, Maitreya, oh, the genuine Maitreya, you show up in innumerable appearances. You emerge in front of us all the time, but no one knows you, right? So it's always, you know, no one knows, you know, where he came from or, or really knows much about him. And yet, you know, he, he, he appears in this world many times uh, to teach, to teach people, to guide people, right? <clears throat> so in the future, uh, we won't know when that, that Maitreya is born, or we won't know who, who that Maitreya is, okay? So, uh, you know, a lot of people, actually, if you go on the internet, you, and you go search for Maitreya, right? You'll see some people who claim they're Maitreya, okay? Um, and as far as I know, the Buddhas don't, don't claim that they are Buddha, okay? They don't claim, they don't make that claim. Mm -hmm. And so, so anyone who makes that claim is probably not the Buddha. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> right? Okay, so, and then, okay, so finally then, in, you know, as 17th Patriarch that we know about, um, okay, we didn't, we don't really know much about the 13th Patriarch, because uh, they didn't really leave any writings behind, things like that. Uh, we just know, now how do we know that they were, you know, the 13th and 17th Patriarchs, um, it's basically later on through these revelations, through sand writing or whatever that, uh, or the Buddhas tell us that that's what, the, uh, you know, they were incarnations. Okay. Okay, so the, the, so this, you know, we kind of talked about last week, right? Um, grew up in poverty, lost his parents early. Okay, so joined. And then so again, he was, you can say, yeah, I mean, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they make vows to come to this world to, to carry out this mission of the Tao. Right to to uh, continue the lineage, to continue the propagation of the Tao, and so uh, so he was guided by dreams to find the 16th patriarch, uh, so that you know eventually he would take on that the, become a patriarch himself, right? Uh, so yeah, so eventually he became a patriarch in 1905, and then he continued until 1925 when he passed away. Um, all right, okay. So uh, so basically, you know, we want to follow the example of Maitreya Buddha. Right, Maitreya Buddha, right, he has always this smiling face, he's very broad-minded, forgiving, merciful, compassionate, right, he's, he's very magnanimous, carefree, and always answered the needs of sentient beings whenever and wherever he could, right, so that's really the embodiment of a Bodhisattva, or a Buddha, okay, and so when, when we come to temple, when we're learning to, this Tao, to cultivate, that's what we are learning to do, to become like that, right, uh, Basically, if we can get rid of the self, that false self, that Im false image of the self, that ego, right? Get rid of that. Uh, 
then we are one with everyone, all sentient beings. We are one with God, we are one with all the Buddhas, right? So that ultimately, that is the, the level that we are trying to achieve, that oneness, okay? So, uh, so that's why, uh, so we should always try to, to learn and follow this, you know, the, you can say the, the philosophy or, or learn these virtues, practice these virtues, okay? Um, so we as white era cultivators, so we're in the white era, uh, and this is the era when Maitreya Buddha is in charge, and so we essentially are following the Maitreya Buddha. Um, so when, he go, when we leave this world, we go back to the inner abbey of that Tusita heaven, and that's where we, they con we continue to cultivate until the time comes for us to be reborn into this world again. Right? In that time, it'll be the heaven on earth. Okay. Uh, when that will happen, I don't know. Um, it's, it's <laughs> no one knows really when that will happen, but I think it'll happen after all the calamities have ha you know have taken place in this world. Okay, so you know there are 81 major calamities during this time in this white era. Uh, the last one is the the scariest of all because that uh, that's like this the winds. <laughs> whatever you call it, the, the, the winds, you know, and the cosmic wind, well, you know, in the Bible, in Revelations, it's the winds, they call it the winds as well, uh, from, the from the four corners, right? <coughs> um, but it, it's, yeah, it could be, it's probably World War Three is my, my imagining, is, is it would be World War Three. Okay, so World War Three, you know, when that happens, it's obviously a nuclear war. So you have radiation, that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, there have been, you know, prophecies that our Buddhas have said that, you know, most people will perish during that time. Um, that only a few would, you know, like less than 30%, probably 30% or fewer will survive. Okay, so <clears throat> basically the survivors will be the cultivators. Okay, so those, are, and why is that? Basically, well, one thing is that at that time, if we're not a vegetarian, we probably won't survive. Okay, because um, it's, it's a known fact that if you're a vegetarian, you have a better uh, resistance to radiation. Okay, uh, because of basically it's potassium. Uh, is it potassium? I think potassium is the element that can help yeah. protect against radiation, right? Even, even the U.S. government during the Cold War, they knew about that. So they would have these potassium tablets um, that people can take to help them in, in when there's radiation. Uh, but... But if we're vegetarian, not only that, that, that's kind of the physical aspect, but, you know, if we're vegetarian, then the Buddhas and saints will help us to protect us, okay? So, so that's why it's very important to be vegetarian or vegan, actually, right? Okay. Uh, and then the cultivators, yeah, the temples, they are all sanctuaries, okay? So there are safe havens. Uh, so when, wh wherever there is a temple, it will be protected, all right? So, uh, you know, because, you know, radiation is a form of energy, and Buddhas, they have, they can, they have the, the ability to either, they can block that energy or whatever. So, uh, in the temples, in, in our temples, um, they can block that and protect those who are in the temples. Uh, so that's why it's always best, that's why we, you know, if you're encouraged to s establish temples, you know, whether it's home temples, whatever, family temples, that, there is, uh, you know, it's protected, okay? All right, so, uh, so ba yeah, basically that's um, pretty much all I have here. Uh, right, so basically, you know, uh, even after, okay, so after coming back to the world, when there is that heavenly world paradise, okay, on Earth, uh, that will be listening to actually Maitreya Buddha, then he will officially become the great, the next great Buddha. Uh, will be actually be able to listen to his, you know, when we were born as well in that time, we'll be able to listen to the Buddha preach the true Dharma at the time, right? So it'll be just be like at Sakamuni's time, if, you know, we were living there and one of his followers, we can actually listen to his teachings directly. Uh, we'll be able to do that at, during that future time. Okay, uh, so hopefully, you know, that, that's something we can look forward to, I guess. Uh, but, you know, until then, we really need to learn to cultivate, uh, cultivate ourselves well. I mean, if we, if we don't cultivate well, we may not even get, get to that point. So, uh, so that's very important to, to cultivate, All right? 
Uh, so any, I don't know, I, I didn't, I didn't have any other things here about that, uh, about my tria. Um, I don't know, Kai, do you have anything else to add about my tria? No. It's pretty much. Oh, for my, uh, my the my Messiah, right? Yeah, the Messiah. I mean, uh, I guess in in various religions they talk about uh, a, a Messiah or a second coming of the Christ or something like that. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, I I can't imagine where <laughs> there would be two messiahs coming or three messiahs coming okay so there should there would only be one okay so and as far as that so as far as we know it would be this maitreya buddha okay so you can call call whatever you want you know you can call him the messiah you can call him the second coming to christ uh it doesn't matter it's all the same it's all one really uh so but we need to kind of get away from the image that we might have of that that <laughs> messiah or maitreya coming as having a certain image right so so we shouldn't think that oh he's going to come looking like this this you know cloth bag monk that the, the the image the, the statue that we see today um i doubt it'll he'll look like that okay or he's not going to look like jesus either he's not going to look like any of those you know so uh basically we have no idea what he's going to look like right yeah, it, it's important to say, yeah, why, why can we say or we, we should understand that there's only one Messiah? Because the, in this period, it's called the Dharma Indian period, right? Yeah. Dharma Indian period. Um, all religions are going to go back to its source. One, you say one. And so that's why there's only one Messiah. Understand? Yeah, you can have many prophets teachers, leaders, pope, whatever, <laughs> whatever, you know, church leaders, and, you know, sect leaders, but they're not the Messiah, okay? Some may proclaim to be, but because they're all going to go back, because, because this is the end of that cycle, you know, the timing, right? So we're all, all as a matter of fact, that's really one of the uh, definitions of a Maitreya Messiah, means all religions, all teachings, all Converge to one, go back to one. All right, so that's why there's only one Messiah. <coughs> yeah, so there can only be one. Yeah, so basically, it's going back to the root, essentially. Uh, so, like, you have all the branches of the tree, but in the end, we have to return back to the root, right? Remember when when we, you know, <laughs> the the third the the hand seal represents that that fruit and the seed that returns back to the root. Okay, so so that's what eventually all yeah all teachings whatever because the, the the teachings over time they they lose their they, they've lost the essence okay so various religions they lost the essence and so once w once you lose the essence then it becomes you can say in the end it becomes meaningless it has no carries no meaning anymore and so the but the Tao the true Dharma you know it's always that's the truth and so so then we have to go back to that that truth original truth okay so once everything lost has lost the meaning then we have to go back find get to that truth okay so that that's the only thing that'll be left right okay so all right um any other <laughs> comments or questions anyone want to be the next maitreya no, <laughs> no. Uh, actually we we are all you know the, i guess some people ask oh where's the maitreya where's the maitreya actually you can say that we are all Maitreya is as well little, you know, carrying out the work of Maitreya because we are the ones who need to go out to propagate the Tao, to, to teach people, to guide people, to, to create that future world, okay? Um, without us, you know, it's not, it can't happen, right? So uh, even though it is heaven's will, it is the will of the Buddha, but it is through us, right? We are the Buddha's hands and feet and mouth, right? To be able to communicate and to perform uh, the things that need to be done to make things happen, right? So, in essence, we are all these little Maitreyas. We are all little Jigong Buddhas, okay? Uh, so, yeah. So don't, you know, uh, underestimate. I mean, we, we actually have a great responsibility. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, that's it. Uh, 
Um, if I had said any, anything wrong, I asked the, the Buddhas for forgiveness and Maitreya Buddha for his forgiveness and, uh, and your corrections.